I'm going to tell you a story that inspired me to make this logic module. My favourite Boolean logic operation is exclusive OR, XOR for short. It's all about a place called Bletchley Park, an ultra secret code breaking operation in World War II that ends with the invention of the computer and it has everything to do with exclusive OR. It's 1940 and radio interceptors on the south coast of Britain are scouring the airwaves listening for anything odd. They pick up a very strange signal. It's definitely not Morse code, so it can't be Enigma traffic. It's clearly encrypted. Not only that, but it's being sent between headquarters. This is serious stuff. Remember, it's 1940, so teleprinters are very common. Normally, that teleprinter code is sent over landlines, but it turns out that this is broadcast teleprinter code. Now rewind to 1914, and there's a clever guy called Gilbert Vernum. He invents the Vernum cipher. This is teletype code punched in paper tape, the old way to store things before they had floppy disks. Vernum came up with the brilliant idea of how to encrypt this so you could send secret messages. This is your plain text, the message that you want to send. Now you have to generate a completely random key stream and through the magic of XOR you can combine these together and come out with a completely new message. This is your secret ciphertext. Vernum's brilliant insight though was that if you take that ciphertext and XOR it again with the original keystream, you can recover and reveal the original plain text message. So as long as the person on the receiving end of your message has a copy of your keystream tape, they can read it. Vernum tried to make a machine, but he came up against all kinds of problems. The two tapes wouldn't synchronise, and they kept tearing along the sprocket holes. So, the idea got abandoned and forgotten about. Back in Bletchley Park, in a section headed up by Major Ralph Tester, the Testery, the codebreakers have nicknamed this mysterious signal Tunny, which is the old English word for tuna. These were very fishy coats, and one of the team, Brigadier John Tiltman, says, You know, chaps, I think this may be a Vernum cipher. That troublesome second tape had been replaced with 12 mechanical rotors that generated a pseudo-random keystream. 1.6 quadrillion positions of the rotors. Before each message, the operators would set their rotor start position to one of those 1.6 quadrillion permutations. This was way more complicated than Enigma. Tiltman knew that all additive ciphers have a weakness. If two messages use the same keystream, then through the magic of exclusive or you can add them together and get little glimpses of the original plain text which you could then use to work out the entire message with a serious amount of head scratching and on the 30th of august in 1941 an operator sending a long message from athens to vienna typed out nearly 4000 characters and then got the message back sorry didn't hear that, can you type it all out again? They were seriously annoyed at having to write this out again. And so, totally against standing orders, reset the cipher machine to the same start position, which meant they were using the same keystream. This was the depth that Tiltman had been waiting for. The crucial thing is, because of XOR, they could now reveal a long stretch of the actual keystream which gave you little tiny clues about how the internal mechanisms of the actual machine worked. This is a table I made by bitwise XORing the binary numbers along the X and Y axis, and you can see a pattern emerging. It's a really simple example of the kind of statistical analysis that they now had to do. Bill Tutt took up the task. This was before computers, remember, so he had to write out the 4,000 bits from each of the five channels of the teletype code at various repetition periods. If you're skilled enough, you can start to spot patterns that reveal the number of positions on the rotor wheels and how they move. After two and a half months, the testery had completely worked out the internal mechanisms of the Lorenz cipher machine without having ever seen it. 
Now, by building their own, they had the whole key stream. They just needed a way of working out the start positions of every message. It would have taken an unimaginable amount of time to try and do that by hand. The answer, again, was exclusive OR. If you bitwise XOR any 5-bit code with itself, you will get five zeros. The German language contains many words with double letters, just like the two N's in Tunny. So, if you duplicate a line of plain text code and offset it by one position with itself, then XOR them together, the result should overall contain more zeros than once because of those double letters. This was called the delta technique. So now, if you run through the start positions of the keystream, XORing it with the ciphertext that you've intercepted, then checking that resulting code with the delta technique, the result with the most zeros is statistically likely to be the correct plaintext. A clever guy called Max Newman, who was Alan Turing's tutor at Cambridge, realised they needed a machine. The first version was nicknamed Heath Robinson after the cartoonist that drew ridiculous contraptions, but it used two tapes and ran up against many of the same problems as Vernum's machine. Plus, it was only electromechanical, so it was too slow. Enter Tommy Flowers. T.H. Flowers was the engineer in charge of the project. Tommy was a brilliant post office engineer, and he was used to working with uniselectors and other electromechanical devices in telephone exchanges, but he'd recently been experimenting with electronic valves, or you might call them vacuum tubes. They could do the same switching job as relays, but much faster, and he suggested using 1,500 of them for generating the wheel positions, doing away with one of the tapes. At first, his idea was dismissed. People only knew valves from their radio sets, and they were always breaking. But Tommy knew that as long as you never turn them off, valves could be incredibly reliable. He used his own money and built Colossus, the world's first digital programmable electronic computer. Colossus could run at a speed of 25,000 characters per second. The tapes go in 30 miles per hour. And the valves generated so much heat that the wrens who operated them would dry their laundry next to it. In the end, 63 million characters of highly valuable tunny traffic was deciphered by the 550 people working at Bletchley and the 100 staff at the radio intercept station in Knockholt. And so you have it, the first electronic computer, all because of XOR. Well, this is not even really 5% of the story, and I've made a playlist on the channel so you can check out much more information. You can actually go to Bletchley Park and see Colossus in action yourself at the National Museum of Computing. I've been working on a Vernum Cipher module, and if you want to follow along with the progress, you can join as a member on Patreon for as little as £2 a month. My top tip for deciding if a piece of music gear is good for you is to read the user guide. And you'll find the user guide for this module and a link to buy one below.